Welcome to Fellowship Church. We are so happy that you chose to start your morning with us. If this is your first time, we're glad to have you. I would encourage you to check out our website and click on the button that says Get Connected. This will help you find out more information about Fellowship and get notified of upcoming events. You can also use the QR code in the pocket in front of you or fill out the connection card to get more details. Men, mark your calendars. On June 13th at 6.30, right here at Fellowship, we are going to be having a men's fire pit night. Join other men from FC for a night of relaxation, conversation, and cornhole. You can sign up online, on the app, or in the atrium. On June 19th, Middletown will host its third annual Juneteenth celebration. This will be held at Harbor Park and will be a day of music and inspirational speakers. We would love to support this event by donating water bottles that will be given out that day. If you would like to help, please bring a case of water with you to church next week. We'll have a spot in the atrium for you to leave it and we will get it over to the celebration. Also, Kehlani Gadlin is organizing volunteers for the event. If you would like to volunteer sometime between nine and three on the 19th, you can sign up in the atrium and Kehlani will get in touch with you. Wow, what a week we had last week. 29 people went public with their faith through baptism. Seeing life change never gets old. I love that our church is a part of so many stories of life change. Perhaps the only thing better than seeing life change is contributing to life change. I've been blessed to be a part of people's lives during seasons when they needed hope and help. Sometimes I was able to help, other times I could only pray and hope with them. But when they tell their story and you know you are a part of it, it just sits differently in our hearts. Some of you were close to those baptized last week and you're celebrating a bit differently than the rest of us. But here's something we might all miss. When you contribute to a church like our church, you are a part of every single story in this church. Your generosity is what creates environments for kids and students. Your generosity is what helps fund camps and retreats and church services and cameras for online broadcasts. You are creating your church as you give and serve at this church. So the next time you hear a story of life change, I hope you feel connected to it because every time you give, you create life change. This is why I'm so big on recurring giving. I love seeing people invest in the lives of others through a plan. We always make plans for what matters most. If you believe in this church, I encourage you to make a plan to give here. If you're a guest, this isn't for you. But for the rest of us, we've made it so easy. Go online or use our app and click Recurring Giving. That's how easy it is. Thanks for helping make this church the best church for the people who need hope and help the most. I want to thank all of you who give regularly to fellowship. Your giving allows us to make a difference in the lives of so many. If you would like to give today, you can do so on our app or website or by sending in a check. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the service. Well, we're beginning a series of messages today called the GOATS. You know, GOAT is an acronym for greatest of all time. And the Bible is full of ordinary people who were tapped on the shoulder by God to do something that required faith on their part. And because they said yes, their stories were written in scripture and we still remember their stories today. So today is about a guy named Noah. You know, what do you do when you sense that God is asking you to do something that seems a little crazy and you have to muster the faith, believing God is there to lead you and he'll protect you. Well, Noah's story is told in Genesis 6 through 8. God had created man and woman. He had instilled free will into them. They ultimately used their freedom to disobey God, which led to a free fall of brokenness and sin. So by Genesis 6... There's about 1 million people on the earth. And in Genesis 6, 5 through 7, it says, The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth. 
and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. So the Lord was sorry that he had ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke his heart. And the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, and I will destroy every living thing, all the people, the large animals, small animals, all the ones that scurry on the ground, and even the birds of the sky. I'm sorry I ever made them. And just like a parent with a rebellious child, God watched as mankind chose to walk away from him and all that was good, and it broke his heart. But the very next verse in Genesis 6, 8 says, But Noah found favor with the Lord. Now, what's favor? Favor is shown when an extraordinary person gives an ordinary person a second chance. And here, God was giving Noah and his family a chance to be rescued. You know, Noah came from a family of God followers, many who took their faith with God very seriously. And in Genesis 6, 9, it says, this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on the earth at the time, and he walked in close fellowship with God. You know, it's important to note that Noah was not close to perfect. He just tried to walk with God the best he could. It mattered to him to do so. So what can we learn from his life? Well, periodically, we're faced with seasons and moments in our own lives that can be disorienting and confusing. And when it comes to following God, some things are really easy to obey and to follow God with, while other things are a bit more difficult. Well, God instructs Noah that he wants him to build a boat because the earth is going to be flooded. I mean, this has to sound ridiculous to Noah. He lives 500 miles from the sea. Scholars tell us that the chances are that Noah hadn't even seen rain before. The ecosystem was different in that day. It, w it led to longer life. The atmosphere was way more pro uh, protective than it is today. Anyhow, he's commissioned to build a boat that's 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and several stories high. And basically, it's equivalent to over 500 railroad boxcars. I mean, just massive. And God says to build it and to bring on his family and two of each animal and to follow him. You know, the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 11, 7, it was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about things that had never happened before. Guys, faith and obedience always go together. Obedience really is God's love language. It's, it's the way forward, and, and it always involves faith. And Noah does as God instructs, and he steps into this unknown, this crazy unknown. You know, even though none of us, none of it really made sense to him, he still did it. You know, do you have the faith? This is a good question for all of us, to obey God when it doesn't make sense. You know, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, his most famous sermon, he challenged us with so many things that really don't make sense in our world today. Things like, you need to love your enemies. That doesn't make sense. To forgive those who have hurt you. Really? To die to yourself daily and to follow him. And, and that's just a few of the things that he said. It takes Noah and his family 120 years to accomplish this endeavor. 120 years! This wasn't a busy weekend or a short semester to follow God. This project went on for over a century. A lifetime for you and me. I mean, this is another insight for us, guys. God's timing of things is always different than our timing. I mean, heck, if you've been married or have any kids, you learn very quickly that your timetable does not align with many other timetables, right? I think about my son, Stephen. He's always been kind of slow and methodical, especially when it comes to eating. He's a very sharp kid, but he just moves methodically and slowly through things. He was always the last one who would get into the car when we all had to get in the car. Uh, his friends at school called him slow-mo because he rarely finished his lunch because he was so methodical in eating. 
You know, Laura and I, we tried all kinds of ways to change him. Guess what? All to no avail. <laughs> so we ended up changing our timetables. We changed our expectations in order to be able to function as a family. And, and isn't that what we need to do with our relationship with God? We need to adjust our expectations to his timetable and not try to manipulate God or change his timetable all the time. God's not going to go for that. He knows what's best. And guys, the longer we live, the more we understand timing is important. You know, did you know that you can do the right thing at the wrong time and it makes it the wrong thing? It happens in life. Timing matters. It matters in sports. It matters in music and art. It matters in business. And it certainly matters in our walk with God. So I'm sure Noah had some sleepless nights throughout these years. How could he not have? I mean, not every day was easy. And I'm sure he wrestled with doubt from time to time. But by faith, Noah moved forward without even totally understanding everything. So if we're going to follow Jesus, we're going to have to ignore the haters as well, just like Noah did, and keep our eyes on God. Guys, not everyone is going to walk with you as you follow Jesus. I mean, this commission by God was not at all easy to accomplish. I mean, imagine the number this did on his own family and how they were harassed and teased. I mean, think about what they thought of their dad. You know, does dad have dementia? I mean, what's, what is this stuff he's hearing from God? What is he doing? Are, are we, you know, they're all helping him work. They're working hard. Are, you know, it's kind of like, are we there yet? You know, wh why is this taking so long? Or just this is ridiculous. I'm, I'm wondering if they had just quit a thousand times. You know, some of you, it just reminds me of our church, you know, some of you are going to Costa Rica to serve children in poverty rather than going on a personal vacation this summer. People might look at you like you're crazy. Others of us, of us we give 10% of our income or more um, or, or, or some less, but we give, we give generously. We give it away to God. Uh, people who know us may think we're nuts. Or we make it a priority to be here and to, to learn from God, you know, while others sleep in and do other things. You know, Noah and his family ignored the haters and kept moving forward. And here we are, still talking about them to this day. Nobody remembers the haters, do they? But we all remember Noah. You know, it's so easy today, especially to be a critic these days. We, we all have platforms, no matter how large or small, or whether we make sense or not. Our, our voice can get out there, and critics can many times sound so smart or seem so much bigger than they really are. But critics, in the long run, they're never remembered. It's the ones who do the hard things. It's the ones who struggle, who dare greatly, who live by faith, who follow God that make an impact on the lives of others, especially those that are closest to them. So what do you do when you sense that God is asking you to take a step when it doesn't really make sense? Well, you trust him that he knows what he's doing and you trust in his timing. You ignore the haters and the critics. But I think you also do this third thing that Noah did. You maximize the opportunities while the doors are still open. You know, open doors... Uh, they're called that for a reason because they don't stay open forever, right? Genesis 7, 1 says, When everything was ready, the Lord said to Noah, Go into the boat with all of your family. For among all the people of the earth, I can see that you alone are righteous. You know, the word go actually means better, probably better translated in Hebrew as come, like an invitation to come into the boat. The door is open, come into the ark, you and your whole family. You know, we see families coming to faith all the time, still to this day, you know, all throughout Scripture. And uh, last week, we, we baptized uh, parents and, with their children and sisters and brothers together. And it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, family does matter. It's his creation. He created the family unit. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. But the Hebrew word for come is to this invitation that he gave Noah into the boat is used many times over, over and over in the Old Testament alone. And what it tells us is this, that God is always in pursuit of us. He's always inviting us in. And for the 120 years 
Um, while the doors were open, the invitation was out, but not one other person accepted. You know, Noah and his family, they board the ark. And for almost a week, many don't realize this, but for almost a week, while the door was closed and they were on the ark, it never rained. Not a drop. I mean, think about that. That had to have been excruciating for Noah and his family. Can you imagine the tension? Yeah, should we get off this thing? Uh, you know, what's really going on here? God said he was going to do something. It doesn't look like he's delivering on it. I mean, was this a waste of 120 years of my life? But after almost a week, that first raindrop fell. And then there were millions that followed. And the earth was flooded. And yeah, real people perished. And Jesus, is, it's interesting, he speaks of Noah himself in telling us that one day the opportunity will end and he will return. He says this, Luke records it in Luke 17, 26 and 27, when Jesus said, when the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. And in those days, the people enjoyed banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time that Noah entered his boat and the flood came and destroyed them all. You know, sometimes we can wait too long. Sometimes doors close quicker than we think. I believe that God is looking for more Noahs today, more men and women who will follow and obey him, especially when it's really difficult, especially when it's not popular. So the question is, will you be remembered as a Noah, the one who followed God when it didn't always make sense, who didn't just fall in line with culture, but stood apart from it, yet always inviting others in. You know, God, even still today, is knocking and inviting throughout our lives. And the question is, will we say yes to his prompting, to his invitation? Some of us may be listening right now. It's our day to say yes to Jesus, to invite Jesus into our life, to forgive us of our sins, to be the leader of our life. For many of us, we need to step into serving and maybe do something for others rather than just for ourselves or others of us we need it's 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 high time we forgive somebody who hurt us and to trust god with that forgiveness or to die to ourselves today and to follow jesus because following jesus is the better life it's the more fulfilling life it's the more abundant life so wherever you are today i want to encourage you to follow the example of noah to trust God, ignore the haters, and remember the door of opportunity does not stay open forever, so obey quickly. God bless you.